The story begins with the introduction of our leading lady, Park Yian Wu, Lee Se Young, who is a mysterious and hanbo and undergarment designer. Yian Wu is the daughter of a noble family, and although her wealth and loving parents have granted her more freedoms than the average woman of her time, she desires complete independence. She's simultaneously keenly aware of the unfairness of her circumstances. Yian Wu's dreams first take a hit after her male business partner betrays her and starts producing clothing that is copied from her designs. Her brand has lost its value, but Yian Wu is a determined woman with a plan. She decides that the way to rebuild her reputation is to have the eldest son of the Kong family, a man so ugly that he remains unmarried at the marriageable age of 28, can be married while wearing her designs. Yian Wu envisages that then people will attribute the end of his bachelorhood to her clothing designs. And her clothing will bloom again. Also her brand will rebound. To put her plan in motion, Yian Wu sneaks into the Kong household, intended on making her marriage proposition to the ugliest man she can find. But instead, she meets Kong Tae Ha of Bay and Hyuk, and he's so handsome that this meetup ends with cute and pretty Ilok and a romantic scene. Before Tae Ha can introduce himself as the ugly, bachelor Yian Wu's has to make a hasty exit because she spots her mother among the guests arriving for the youngest Kong son's birthday party. Unfortunately, at this point, things go from bad to worse for Yian Wu's secret business. The king catches the princess wearing a mini skirt and bans all scandalous, immoral clothing from the kingdom. And just like that, Yian Wu's business goes up in flames. To make matters worse, Yian Wu's mother Kim Yo Jin, who has known all along about her daughter's secret profession, delivers some harsh truth bombs. The freedom and independence Yian Wu dreams of cannot be attained by women, and the few privileges she has benefited from over the years have been due to her parents' leniency and social status. Being a single, independent woman won't make her life better. Yian Wu resigns herself to her status in life and an arranged marriage to the ugly Kong bachelor, but not without first making one last-ditch effort to run away. Tae Ha catches her in the act of climbing over the wall, but instead of snitching on her, or being offended that she would try to run away from their upcoming wedding, he takes her on a date. You see, Tae Ha has been smitten with Yian Wu since a one-time encounter as children, and ever since then, he's cherished the butterfly norage she left behind. Yian Wu, however, has no recollection of meeting him, or at least she doesn't recognize him, but each time she encounters Tae Ha in the present, she grows more and more fond of him because he's charming and, more importantly, supportive of her dreams. Little does she know, he's her husband-to-be, but before she can find out that bit of information, her father finds her and takes her back home, where she resigns to follow through with her duty as a daughter. The wedding day arrives, and while everyone was eagerly anticipating the moment Yian Wu discovered her new husband's true identity, I failed to pick up on the subtle cues that not all was well with Tae Ha. As the story intended, I assumed Tae Ha was just another staunchly independent man who was either averse to the idea of marriage or holding out for the right woman, e.g. Yian Wu. But sadly, our nobleman has a heart condition and fears dying young, thus leaving his widow behind to navigate his stepmother's Jin Kyung machinations without him. On their wedding night, Tae Ha cuts the strings of their hanbo to signify the end of their marriage, but Yian Wu is staunchly against an annulment and falls asleep blocking the door to prevent his exit. As Tae Ha gazes fondly at her sleeping form, his heart rate accelerates, he coughs up blood, and before the sun rises on their married life, Tae Ha dies. She's now mourning her husband and telling her deceitful mother-in-law that she will properly perform her duties as a widow despite the Kong family's duplicitousness of hiding his condition prior to the wedding. The next she's being kidnapped and tossed into a well. Will her life end this way or the future awaits the other way round for her? Let's look forward to another episode's explanation.